Hey everyone, CobDev here, and it feels good to be back. It's been uh, a long six months since I last uploaded. Uh, I explained it in my other video, uh, which is labeled I'm back, kinda. Uh, so go watch that for a quick explanation on why I've been gone. But we are back with Breath of the Wild. Um, I spent probably about an hour or two just reviewing everything in this project, so I'm all caught up and I haven't forgotten anything. And there's a few changes I want to make just to polish this up a bit. Um, the first, we're going to fix the gliding. That's the main thing. So let me open my whiteboard and, and explain something real quick. Alright, ignore my awful drawing uh, skills for a second. Um, but at the moment, this is how we glide. So if we I take my pen here. Imagine this is the ground, and this is this platform we've created for ourselves up in the air. And this is us. Now when we run and jump off, this is kind of what happens. We start to go on this crazy slope, and soon we're pretty much just falling straight down. And that's not what we want at all. We want... Uh, how do I scroll to a different... There we go. Um, what we want to do is... More of something like, like like this, right? So that's the main thing we're going to be fixing. And then we're going to uh, fix a couple other things as well. So let's go into our third person character. Wow, these are huge. OK, third person character. And what we need to do is go find our uh, jump right here. And let's open up Glide. So we're going to follow through this. Right. Uh, one more thing. Right before we get started on this, go into the viewport. We're going to add a scene. And we're going to call this ground line trace. This is going to replace uh, our sphere collision. Um, there's really no need for it to be a sphere collision. We're not testing any type of collision. So we're just going to use a scene, which is just basically a point in space. Um, and we are going to let's make it a child of that. So we put that at 90, and then unchild it so it's there. Um, so we can just click Find References. We only have one. We can double click on that. Is that going to work? Guess not. All right, go to Glide, and it's right here. And we just want to replace it with our ground line trace. And then we can delete this. And everything will work the same, it's just now we don't have an unnecessary sphere collision uh, when there was nothing that uh, it needed to test for colliding. So go back into Glide. I'm going to follow right here. Set the movement mode to gliding. And we spawn our actor. So double click on switch movement modes. We're just working down the line until we find it. Gliding, enum gliding. Is sprinting, is gliding. And we're going to be in the set glide settings right here. OK. So open this. Yes. So this is what we're going to be changing. We're not going to try to cheat our way into gliding by reducing our gravity scale. Uh, we're not going to adjust the gravity scale and all that. What we are going to do is we're actually going to set our movement mode to flying. Um, the character's movement mode, it's not the enum that we made previously. So let's grab our character movement. And we want to set movement mode and set it to flying. What flying does is basically just kind of gets rid of gravity, is the simplest way to put it. Once we're flying, uh, we can still move left and right, but uh, it doesn't go up or down. So what we're going to do is actually, while we are flying, we are going to push our character down um, every frame. Um, and once he hits the ground, uh, we're going to stop him. This is going to give us that, uh, or to close the whiteboard, but it's going to give us that diagonal fall that we want. So we need to create a new function for this because we're going to put it on a timer. So let's go into function, and we'll call this gliding downward movement. And we'll put it in our paragliding category. Let's go back into set glide settings. And we will set timer by function name. 
object will be self function name will be gliding down word movement. Um, this uh, has to be the exact same as this. Uh, just um, make sure it's spelled the exact same or it will not work. Uh, turn looping to true and for time we're just going to get the world delta seconds and plug that to time. So go back into gliding downward movement and we're just going to call a launch character check that Z override and we're just gonna launch in negative a hundred every time I think yeah we use this same node earlier but we're no longer using it for this part right here now after we launch the character all this every time we want to check um, if we've hit the floor um, because when we are in flying mode uh, the is falling basically becomes obsolete since it categorizes us as flying it doesn't say we're falling so we don't have this built in we can't just be like you know if we're no longer falling then um, or if we're moving on the ground then do this because those don't really work anymore so this is how we are going to do it go to the event graph get your capsule component and scroll down here and we're gonna create an on component hit we also want to scroll up here and make sure we check simulation generates hit events now off of this uh, execution node we're just gonna get a branch and we're gonna ask if they are gliding is gliding because um, we only want to call this if we're gliding um, and if that's true then we want to check the hit component if it's object type if we get the object type if the object type is equal to world static and I just straighten that out and we'll call another branch right here put that into true and if it is we need to create a new variable called um, a hit static object while gliding bit of a mouthful right there for a variable but it's fine and we will set this to true and then we will wait a couple seconds let's say like two seconds and set it back to false just so we're you know able to call it again um, Maybe, maybe one second, just to make it happen real fast. So if we go back into set glide settings, no, gliding downward movement. Since this is called uh, every, uh, every tick, we are just gonna check right here if they're uh, hitting a static object. And if they are, we're going to call stop gliding. Now go into stop gliding and pull this off. We just need to make a add a couple things. Since we're changing, since we change our character movement to flying in gliding, we want to make sure when we stop gliding, we set the movement mode back to walking. Now this movement mode is not the same as this movement mode. We made an enum earlier. It's called uh, movement modes, but they are different. They're just named the same thing. One comes from character movement, and one is our own. Um, so we're setting this one to walking. See, this one has walking, nav mesh walking, falling, swimming, flying. And those are all built in. So we're setting this back to walking. And then we want to clear timer by function name. We want to clear our uh, downward movement, or whatever it's called. Yeah, gliding downward movement and now I have to say the obligatory this has to be spelled the exact same as your function and compile and save let's go into character movement search for flying and let's bump up this fly speed I like to uh, double it and we also want to check can fly to true compile and save all right, and if I didn't make any mis any mistakes, uh, this should work now. Um, but 
I do make a lot of mistakes, so let's uh, let's see let's see how this works. So let's jump off. Let's start gliding. And already this gliding is looking a lot better. Now let's hit the ground before we we're falling really slow, but yeah, hit the ground and we're uh, back to normal. I forgot how goofy this run was. Oh, and I made myself exhausted. Um, so let's give it a couple more tests to make sure everything's working fine. So we're gliding, we stop gliding, glide again, and we land. Oh, it's unable to land there, but we land on this and we're fine. All right, let's try to see if uh, we stop gliding when we lose all our stamina still. That shouldn't have changed. And, oh, but it does work. Now we need to, hmm, it only kind of works. Something's wrong there. I'll, uh, let's look into that. All right, so it seems like in our, if we go to our event graph, and we go to exhausted, this is called when we run out of stamina. And we, we can see that nothing here tells us to stop gliding, which means we're still in our flying state. Um, so we kind of just fall and fly at the same time and it gets all confused. So let's pull this off. And when we call exhausted, we want to first ask if we were gliding when we became exhausted. And if it's false, let's throw that in there. We don't really necessarily need this is gliding in the false, just because that won't really make a difference at all. Um, is sprinting? No, can sprint. Set default gravity settings. We probably don't even need this macro anymore because we never change the gravity settings. So yeah, let's go ahead and delete that. I'm sure that's in other spots. So let's find them. Uh, set default gravity settings, find references. And let's get to those in a second. Set to exhaust, cool, and set regeneration stamina. If we were gliding, we're going to call stop gliding. And th throw that in like that. Okay, now let's go into stop gliding. Uh, and we have one problem here. It's that uh, this sets the movement mode to walking rather than exhausted. We don't want that. So let's just kind of pull these out for a second. Because we still want to do all this. And right after destroy actor, we're going to call an if. We're going to ask if the movement modes ref is equal to exhausted and if it isn't then we just want to call this set it to walking because we don't want to set it to walking if uh, it were exhausted obviously and the true can still go into the switch movement modes so let's compile and save so let's test that out now get rid of most of our stamina before we jump oh. and run out of stamina and wow we crashed okay so we don't actually want to plug this into switch movement modes because that, uh, that will crash the editor because it's trying to call that multiple times so I think we're gonna have one more error let's run out of stamina here and And then we fall. Um, oh, we didn't get in there. Maybe I pressed escape too early. Let's, let's try this again. I'm going to want to try to land inside here. I'm going to hold down alt, increase this floor here. All right, and to get rid of these shadows, I'm going to get our light source. I'm going to change this to movable real quick. So let's hit play and get rid of our stamina and try to stay on the platform and we fall 
And we are stuck like this, and I think that's where we get our error. So let's fix that. And I figured out our last issue. Um, it was something I actually remember noticing quite a while ago um, from an older video. That, um, but in this stop gliding, it's directly in this function that we want to set is gliding to false. And let's go back one more time. Let's use up all our stamina, jump, glide, run out before we hit the floor, and we are now exhausted. Can't sprint. We can jump, and now we can move again, and we're good to go. All right, so we really polished up that uh, that gliding. It's much better now. Um, there's a couple more things I want to change just while we're here, uh, just because they're not long enough to deserve their own video. Um, one is the rune menu. If we hit tab, we open up this rune, you can see as I'm hovering right here, nothing's happening until I click. Now I can interact with it. And then I press tab, um, and I have to click again to get back in here. So we'll fix that. So go back into your third person character. Let's close all these now that we've fixed them up. And in the event graph, where is this? This one? Yeah, rune selection. Uh, let's go down here. Let's pull this over. We're going to take this player controller and do set input game and UI right before we show the mouse cursor. Plug that in. Wow, I am having trouble. Okay. <laughs> Um, the widget to focus is going to be our rune selection HUD. And on this bottom one, when we turn it off, we're going to set input mode game only. And connect that up. Now let's hit compile and supply. So we're in the game, we hit tab, and already uh, this hovering is working. We can select what we want. I'm going to hit tab again, and we're back in the game. Um, all right, let me check my notes real quick and see if that's the last thing. All right, I think we are all good to go. Uh, okay, right before I head out, I'm just going to show you a couple things you can edit to your liking um, in the uh, for gliding, um, or it's in set glide settings. Oh, one, yeah, one thing we did for you is set default gravity settings. So we can find those references. And we can just we can just remove them all. There's no need for them anymore since we're not altering the gravity. And this one, that's just the thing itself. All right, compile and save and find the references again. Do double check. This is just in it itself so you can just delete it and you'll be safe no errors okay um, but yeah now to in set glides settings well first off we can delete this old old one right there um, you can adjust the uh, if you go to character movement you can adjust the fly speed I thought 1200 worked pretty well for what we were looking for and the other thing you can change is in the gliding downward movement, you can change this uh, value right here, uh, increase it to make him fall faster, uh, decrease it to make him fall slower. Uh, I experimented with some, I think negative 100 works for what we're looking for. Um, and that's just how you can kind of uh, customize it uh, to how you like it. Um, I like these values. Um, we fixed them, some things up. Um, pretty soon we're going to be working on actually uh, creating these rooms and you know letting us do things with them instead of just selecting them. Um, and also some uh, open world functionality. We're going to be learning about open world stuff too. And then we'll get to combat and uh, AI. Um, Alright, so that's going to be it for this episode. Hope you enjoyed. I will see you in the next one.